Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, why iPads? Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge, and today I want to go back to the big ideas about why I talk so much about iPads and why I think iPads are still one of the best choices of devices for the classroom and more specifically even in early childhood and the elementary classrooms. I think these devices can work across the curriculum and obviously I think they're a great opportunity for higher education because we ask our students to buy tablet devices but I'll talk about some of the big ideas. And the first one is, and this is really important, uh, the difference between iPad and let's say a smart board or any of those devices that are teacher devices is that iPads can and should be used first and foremost as learning devices. That is, devices that are held by students and are used by students to compose, to create, and to consume. So it's a way for the learning to end up on the student side, not just the teacher side. Now teachers can use it as a teaching device, but the greatness of the iPads and devices like it are actually when they're in the hands of students. That's where they make the biggest difference. So what is that difference? One of the first thing I think about that separates all of the tablets, but definitely the iPad from other devices is the fact that they're mobile. And that is you can just take them out and take them with you, whether you're teaching with them and then you're walking around with them or you're learning with them. And that means you can go down uh, the hall or sit on the carpet or sit in a corner with some of your friends and they're all accessible. They move around, they can be held very easily, a thing you can't really do with a laptop, let's say, and maneuvered. And the other bonus that it has is the camera on both sides. So you can use it as a device to take pictures or video very, very easily just by clicking on it and going. And there are apps that help you do even a better job. So that's, that's an, a major, major thing that you can actually take these devices with you, whether you're going just outside to an open air classroom or you're going on a field trip or you're going home very mobile, very usable in multiple environments. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and that is crucial for students, especially in the early grades, and I would argue students with disabilities and others when they're using the device, and that is the touch interface. The ability to move between different things without actually having to type things or use even a mouse, but actually that ability to move around, open something, close it very easily, and move on is really, really important. It makes it quick, easy, easy to understand, almost no training for students, and they can go with it. Actually, we know that very young kids are able to do that very, very effectively. So that touch interface really, really helps. Now, on top of the touch interface, you can have a keyboard, virtual or real, and you can use the voice interface as well. So there are lots of opportunities, but they're all very, very easy. And the iPads have a very good touch interface that is highly reliable, has very low error rate, and therefore really helps when you bring it into the classroom and everybody can do it almost immediately. The second thing that I love about the iPads and I don't like as much about the iPad mini and other tablets that are smaller is real estate. When you want to read, when you want to look at whole websites, when you want to consume certain kinds of media, the ability to have a larger screen allows you to see much more, allows kids, especially with gross motor control that is good, but fine motor control that isn't good, that amount of real estate allows them to maneuver very effectively and a lot better than on a smaller screen. So I really do like that larger screen. It also means that kids can share and they don't necessarily need to work on their own. It's really hard to share when you've got a very small screen because then everybody kind of crouches around it and tries to get the right angle. With an iPad, it's still very, very much possible. Um, another thing that works for the iPads is stability. Um, the iOS ecosystem 
is really, really stable. Teachers don't have to worry about it. They don't have to learn special tricks and special ways to boot things up. Anybody can go up to the device, turn it on, and it works right there and then. And there are no special things, passwords, and other things that really complicate your life. You can add them on, but they don't have to be there. The device is almost always on, so you don't have a boot up period and all of that. And that stability is really, really important, especially because you can use this device in two major ways. You can use the apps, and the apps on the App Store are excellent. I've been reviewing hundreds of them at this point. And so lots of sources of information for excellent apps that have fantastic gra graphics and sounds. And on top of the apps, it interacts really well with, uh, with the internet. And you can search things on the web. You can bring up website. Most things work by now. And so it is really able to capitalize both on the things that are available on the web and the things that are available in self-contained apps, allowing you to have the flexibility to really work on this. But again, I go back to that idea that it is first and foremost a learning device. On the teaching side, the ability, you have the ability to present from it, especially if you have wireless presentation, you can be anywhere in the classroom. You can let students have command of that same presentation system. And you can also use it as a document camera, a recorder, and a few other things that really help enhance what happens in the classroom. So there are lots of good reasons to still consider the iPad one of the best devices for the classroom. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.